Hey guys, are you up for a quick and easy paint splatter art technique? Well, stay tuned to my video because I have one of my favourites to share with you today. You're going to want to watch this one to the end because I'm sharing two ways in which you can use this technique. So basic tools to get you started, you're going to need some paint. Any type of paint that you can make fluid. So you can use a pan format watercolour paint, just add some water, you could use liquid watercolour paint. All you can do as I'm doing and that's using paint markers. Now the paint marker I'm using are the Derwent Graphic Line Painter pens and if you know this brand you'll know that these pens they're really drippy they drip and they splatter everywhere so bear that in mind if you want to buy these pens but they're great for this technique but if you don't have this brand don't worry about it because you can use anything you can make into a fluid so you can even use your heavy body acrylic paints your acrylic inks if you can splatter it, you can use it. Next, what you're going to need is a shape. And the shape I'm going to go for is this pineapple design, which I actually made last year. But I still kind of like this design, so I'm going to use it again for this technique. Now, I've already got my shape cut out from cardboard from the previous project. And this is a great tip. Keep all your cutouts and all of your shapes. I often have them in a little envelope. They're always handy to keep around. So I'm just going to use this cardboard shape first and then when we move on to the other way to use this technique, I'll show you another material you can use that you've also probably already got in your stash. So place your shape on the paper that you want to use and I'm using a mixed media paper. This is 90 pounds or 190 GSM in weight. You can also use um, a heavyweight watercolour paper or a page from your art journal. I've kept this simple for this video so you can see it quite easily but this could be one of your layers when you're art journaling. I want to get a nice mix of the colours on the paper so I'm just going to help this along a little bit by spraying the surface with water but the trick is is not to flood the area with water. So one way to ensure that you don't flood the whole area with water is to just do a section at a time and that's what I'm doing here. This will mean that I'll have some nice movement of the colour, some nice mixing of the colours together but I'll also get that lovely texture of just the splatters on the dry areas and just as with other techniques you can build it up layer by layer and this is another reason why I picked the paint markers over some of the other formats like the watercolor paints mainly because once this paint marker is dry it's acrylic so it will stay there and it won't mix with layers that I put on top but it really depends on what materials you've got in your stash and what kind of look you're trying to achieve and my suggestion to you would be just try all of them and see what you like. And quick techniques like this one are a great way to discover your materials and see how they work. And I have lots more ideas and inspiration for how to get the most out of your materials. So just have a look through my videos and I'll link up some of my playlists for you to explore. So don't forget to check the description below. Cardboard shape is doing a really great job of masking that area off. But we do need to make sure that we get colour right up to the edge of the cardboard mask. Otherwise, when we lift it off, you won't have a defined shape and it'll just look a little blurry. So as I build up my layers, I'm making sure that I am getting paint right up to the edge and there is colour in a nice defined shape. So if that means you have to add a little bit more water and a little bit more paint to some sections or the other sections, then go ahead, do it. And if you need to lift up the mask to check, then do, but just make sure you put it back in exactly the same place as before. And it also helps that if you do lift it off before you're finished, that when you put it back on, you make sure the mask is completely dry because you don't want paint to smudge inside that shape. These paint pens are really easy to flick, as you can see, but if you're using the other formats, you might want to try different brushes. And I would suggest a nice round head brush or a mop brush. Now, they are really good at doing splatters, but you can also get specialist splatter brushes. And you can also try using old toothbrushes, as they can give a fun splatter texture. So that's method number one done. And you've got a great negative space pineapple shape with all that lovely texture. And if you look up really close, you can see the splatters and you can see where paint has mixed, where it's just spread out in the water. So just imagine getting that look on your next art journal page using one of your favorite shapes. You could even use it with monograms. How cool would that look? Great for card making as well. And how about some wall art? So there's plenty of things you can do with this. Okay, so that was one way of using that technique. And here's the second method I wanted to share with you today. And for this one, I'm going to use the same shape again, but this time I'm gonna make my mask out of 
just ordinary paper. Well, I say ordinary, this is slightly heavier than copy paper. You know, the kind of paper that you get in your printer. This is actually around about 160 GSM, which I think is equivalent to about 50 pounds, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Now, I'm super happy to use just ordinary printer paper for a lot of my mask techniques, and you'll see that if you've seen my other videos. But here, as I'm using quite a lot of water, I thought I'd go for just a slightly heavier weight paper so that the water doesn't soak through the paper too easily. So after I've just simply transferred the shape onto the piece of paper with a pencil by drawing around the cardboard shape and then just cut it out with a craft knife. I have left both the positive and the negative shape. Now we've already seen with the cardboard how we used the positive shape to mask out for splatter. Well how about now using the negative shape? So we're going to see what effect we have when we use the outside frame of that cutout as our mask using this technique. So the same tricks apply. You don't want to flood the area with water, so it's best to use less water and build up. And you want to make sure you get color right to the edge of the shape, so you get a nice defined look when you lift the mask up when you're finished. And again, you can use the same flicking technique just to get those splatters onto the page. And if you're using the brush, try out different ways again of splattering the paint onto the surface. It's just a great technique to have a lot of fun with. So go ahead and try out different things and let me know what shape you're going to be using in your next art splatter project because I would really love to hear so drop me a comment below and then don't forget to tag me in your social media shares because I would love to see the art as well that you make and you never know your work might get a shout out in one of my videos. So if you found my video helpful in any way, please do share it with other people you think might find it interesting. Give it a thumbs up as well. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm always bringing out art and craft videos full of tips and tricks and inspiration as well. You guys are the best and it's a total pleasure to share with you. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all next time. See you soon.